So you probably have heard about sexual assault, rape, consent, but what about sexual coercion? You consented, but the means by which you said yes wasn't really kosher. Hi, I'm Erin, and today I'm going to be giving you a lesson on sexual coercion. If you like this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below for more content like this, and to support my channel and my work. I am bringing you this video today because I think this is a really important topic, and honestly, something that has come up in my own life because this week I was in a situation where I experienced sexual coercion and I realized it's a topic that affects so many of us and I think it's a part of I don't love the term rape culture really although that is a separate conversation but part of rape culture or part of just the definition of sexual assault as defined by the DOJ that isn't something you necessarily hear about a lot though and isn't something that you know probably a lot about. Actually, even for me, someone who has a degree in human sexuality, after having this experience, I was doing a little Googling to try to fully unpack and understand and process it and that's when I came across this term again and I was like, oh right, that's why I feel icky and weird and gross about it because this was sexual coercion. This wasn't normal and this comes with some trauma. So I want to bring you this education and open up this conversation. So let's talk about what sexual coercion is and um, what to do if you're in this situation. I think it's very, very common how to get out of this situation if you're in it. Um, what are some misconceptions? Do's and don'ts. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Sexual coercion is a situation in which consent was given or gotten through some type of inappropriate means, usually manipulation. Sometimes this can be pressuring or threatening, but basically it's when somebody pressures you or manipulates you into having sex with them. And this could be many different types of sexual contact or intimacy you know this isn't necessarily just intercourse it could be oral sex it could be anal sex it could be kissing fingering touching licking grabbing like a variety of different behaviors right it's not just one type of sex but it can apply to almost any sexual activity um so basically what makes it so complicated is that unlike when we're talking about consent where it's like do you want to have sex with me yes or no a person isn't just asking do you want to have sex with me yes okay let's do it no okay let's not you're doing so in a way where either they're not being totally upfront in the way that they're asking or they're using some kind of a threat or um, badgering means in which to ask you, they're guilt tripping you, they're doing something so that the way that they're asking doesn't give you full agency in which to say yes. They're um, asking you in a way that is coercive, hence the definition. Could involve a lot of different situations. For simplicity's sake, we're gonna assume that the situation is two people who are in some kind of a romantic or sexual context because like for instance you know this this could happen in a situation where a tenant and a landlord in a legal contract and the landlord tries to essentially extract sex from the tenant um uh, as a coercive means um of and saying like hey you know you don't have to pay your rent um you know if you sleep with me basically that would be coercive 
um, under this definition. However, for simplicity's sake, we're not going to assume that kind of situation. We're going to assume two people in either a romantic or sexual context um, purely. So usually there's some kind of a pressure put on to um, one of the two parties to say yes. This can look like a variety of different things. This can be something that the person is aware of. This could look like something the person's not aware of. Um, Something that the person might not be aware of could be alcohol. One party might try to sort of liquor the other person up in order to loosen their inhibitions to make it more likely that they'll say yes later in the night. Like maybe they said no earlier or maybe they are think it's likely they would say no. Um, but after, you know, four or five drinks, um, they think that it's a lot more likely that they would say yes or even less able to say no. Um, and that's essentially, that's coercive though. If you're giving somebody drinks so that they'll sleep with you, that's sexually coercive behavior. Um, and as the other person, you might not even be aware that that's going on, likely not. And, you know, you have no way of really knowing that and are probably thinking that, well, you know, you said yes, so what can you really do, right? A lot of times, this can be something that um, comes with a lot of pressure. So somebody might sort of threaten you. Um, they might threaten to like leave or disengage the relationship. Like they might threaten to go to sleep with somebody else. Um, they might threaten if you're in a relationship with a person, they might say like, see you later. Um, might threaten to break up with you, kind of manipulate you into sleeping with them, which is probably one of the most common ways that this happens. It, it's so hard to, I think, explain exactly how this happens because it's so individual. But um, basically trying to guilt you or shame you, tell you that, you know, there's something wrong with you um, for not pleasing them, like stonewall you. So like, you know, refusing to talk to you, refusing to answer your calls or texts, um, maybe kicking you out um, if you don't sleep with them, you know, doing things like that where it puts sort of this undue burden of pressure onto you to perform right? That's coercion, plain and simple. More, I think, subtle ways that this can happen through things like um, trying to uh, withhold affection from somebody. So kind of shutting down or like, and like completely ending the interaction with someone. So instead of just being like, okay, that's cool. You know, usually like if you're hooking up with someone, maybe you don't want to go all the way or like do a specific thing. It's probably not going to go like from a hundred to zero or zero to a hundred, right? Um, like maybe you'll just hang out or cuddle for a little bit or insert, you know, other behavior here. Um, but instead maybe this person is, is basically like, all right, see you later, like I said, like kicking you out or just completely goes cold. Um, or maybe they start to guilt you by saying like, you know, oh, you're a prude or um, calls you names. Perhaps they um, like, you know, well, like maybe they physically kind of like shut you out, like turn away from you, go into another room, sort of emotionally shut you out, like refuse to talk to you, um, go silent stonewall you like in real life <laughs> um there's a lot of different like things and ways that this can look but sort of engaging in these different sorts of behaviors of denial um or shaming um sort of using these different like standards of behavior like oh you know i i haven't had sex in such a long time or um, you know, I really need this, or I've been so looking forward to this, or I can't believe you would do this to me, um, or 
or, you know, you must not really love me, whatever, right? Um, and like putting pressure on you, again, to do the thing, <laughs> um, to have sex with them. And sometimes this can also go the other way where they can almost overcompensate by showering you with affection or giving you a bunch of compliments or trying to win you over. So instead of, but it's, that's still a way of not respecting your boundaries um, because instead of accepting no for an answer, what they're doing is they're trying to manipulate you and they don't really mean these compliments either, right? Like it's not genuine. They're doing it as a means to an end. Say no and then they try to beg you or plead with you. They, they even try to um, take you on a really nice date um, and then get you to have sex with them. Or maybe they give you a bunch of really sweet compliments about how sexy you look and um, how hot you are or like how much they would enjoy you doing this for them. Um, it might seem sweet and nice and it's honestly I think hard with that type of coercive bit it <laughs> or to sort of stay strong in your conviction but it's still coercive again because it's not genuine and it's not respecting your boundaries at the same time um you know having a safety plan in mind you know having your phone close to you all of that stuff having somebody else know where you are who you're with those are always good things. I think at the end of the day, there's two main strategies that you can use in this situation. And I think it depends if you wanna have future interactions with this person, how well you know them, and what you're looking to get out of it. If it's somebody that you know, like, and trust, and you're looking to continue a relationship with, then want to express your interest in them, being with them, doing an activity with them, or even continuing the sexual encounter with them, but that you're not interested in fill in the blank. And then also perhaps suggest having a conversation about boundaries and at a later time you can bring up this issue in a longer form when you're not in the bedroom or in kind of a heated situation since having this kind of discussion like in a sexual situation isn't the best idea and if it's not someone that you're interested in seeing again or don't know well or whatever I would say that your best option is to get out of there and you know you can figure out the rest later. <laughs> so basically, by whatever means necessary that is, to just end the interaction and tell them that you're not interested. Thanks, but no thanks. I think also pointing out what they're doing is a very useful thing to do as well. Pointing out the fact that they're coercing you, that they're pressuring you, that they're manipulating you. Um, don't expect them to not resist it, but I don't think it's a bad thing to put this out there. If you feel safe, of course. If it's not a situation where you feel safe doing that, then don't. But generally speaking, most people don't like to be accused <laughs> of being uh, manipulators and are not wanting to sleep with a girl who accuses them of such and it's a good way to kind of get someone off your back if that makes sense um, if you're worried about them 
trying to keep pressuring you, if you put that out there, they're probably going to be like on to the next pretty quickly. I think also just for self-awareness and all of that, you know, there are some men who genuinely will do some reflection and take what you say into account. So yeah, um, I'm going to also put some resources in the description. It's, it's tricky because, uh, you know, technically this is, it, it, like if you if you did sleep with them after they coerced you, it would be a crime. It falls under the definition of sexual assault according to the DOJ. But as we all know, I think most police wouldn't take this very seriously. It would be very hard to prove. It would pretty much be a he said, she said kind of situation, right? Because even if you can prove that you had sex through like, um, they collected, um, like a rape kit and, um, the physical evidence of it. And, you know, even through whatever other means, you know, security footage of you going into their home or whatever, right? It doesn't, it's hard to prove intent. And so much of, um, criminal proof is about intent in, in a rape situation, because it's it's not that hard to necessarily prove that two people had sex, but it's hard to prove what the intent behind it was, right? Because unless we have like a hidden camera, how do we know what happened? <laughs> and how much of the time do we have a hidden camera one's bedroom right not often so it's very hard to prove that and so I think unfortunately if this does happen to you your options are probably pretty bleak in the reality of it I don't I don't think you know it could you could pursue it you know would it be worth pursuing I don't even know what kind of like punishment someone would actually even be looking for that it would depend on your state and all of that, of course. But I think a lot of people who go through things like this would feel like, oh, this isn't real rape or really sexual assault. It's not that bad. So I should just get over it or I shouldn't feel this badly. I shouldn't feel X, Y, and Z about it. But I do feel this way and so and I feel guilty or I feel ashamed about my feelings. And I just want to say that no matter how you feel, there's no wrong way to feel. And any reaction to a traumatizing situation is completely normal and understandable. Anybody putting you in this kind of situation is wrong to do so and there's no justification for it and coercion is assault it is sexual assault by definition so thanks so much for watching and I hope that you'll share this video with people in your life collectively talk about this more and stop it from happening.